Here we are Monday, two days, 48 hours before the close of the 372 units. We've got all the signature pages, right? All the signature page, pages for the one deal. Uh, we're closing in escrow, so we're closing virtually, which is what we've been doing since COVID. And I kind of like it because I don't have to drive anywhere for the clo closing. And it's pretty much all done and taken care of 24, 48 hours before the actual closing date. And then all we have to do really the day of closing is really just get the keys firm a few things up on the settlement statement and our team's got to go out and give notices the same day to the tenant base, let them know, hey, we're the new uh, people that you're cutting checks to, we're the new owners, we're the new managers, we're the new management company, and uh, we roll from there. So I've gotten accustomed and used to liking that. Don't have to drive into the title company, which I know some people are like, I love driving the title company. Signing everything, we then overnight docs to the title company, overnight docs to the lender, overnight docs to our legal team. We usually do that 48 to 72 hours before. And then that way they're getting there 24 hours before they put the signature pages together and we rock and roll. We've done, I think maybe four or five closings this way now. So excited to get this one closed, move forward. We are still doing some final touches to the operating budget as this thing's evolving, right? It's always evolving as far as moving forward and rent amounts change. And as we find out due diligence through this whole process, certain things have changed. And so we're finalizing the app operating budget. Basically when we're 15 to 30 days in, we can send our first round of renewals out at the uh, price that then puts us on pace, right? For that first month to hit our business plan for the first four months, the first six months, the first 12 months, the first 18 months, the first 36 months, the first, you know, five years of it, seven years, et cetera, et cetera, right? We want to start to go in that trajectory. Um, so that's why we try to line everything up and we're always making final tunes, final adjustments. And the cool thing is that we've kind of already got a little test run in this market where we're closing the 372 units because we've got an 88 unit building and a 48 unit building. The 48 unit building that we've owned for a couple months now is actually right in the same town where 320 of these, 328 of these units are that we're buying of the 372. And um, we're way ahead there as far as renewals um, and occupancy where we thought we would be. We thought our renewals, our renewal amounts would be a little bit lower than they are. And we thought that less people would renew at these higher prices. So um, we're kind of ahead of pace there, which is really a good foreshadowing of what's going to come, what we think is going to come in this next 372 units that we're closing on Wednesday. We think that we're going to be able to be pretty aggressive. And, you know, we have things that were that, that are lined up, like I talked about in some other videos that we're going to do, you know, take care of the driveway, the asphalt. We're going to take care of some roofs. We're going to take care of uh, the common area paints, flooring, carpet, lighting, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we're going to pull the trigger on those right away so people start to see the improvements, see the updates, to know that, hey, they're getting something out of their renewals as well. Their renewals going up as well. Um, but we're excited to close that. And then right behind that, today I've been working on, we have 64 units that are under LOI. And then we are officially getting out another LOI or offer to purchase yet right away today uh, or tomorrow morning on another 400 units. The 64 units that we've already got under LOI, those 400 units, we'll combine them into, it'll be two sellers essentially total. We'll combine them into you know one portfolio that's just shy of 500 units, and we're going to go out and raise ballpark 15, 16 million dollars uh, for that, and it's about a 52-ish million dollar deal. And then um, that would that would if if you know again, there's a lot of ifs that have to fall in place, and you know the domino effect's got to get rock and rolling and going. But if you know that happens, that would take us close to 2,000 units here, um, and I think all that would close likely end of July, mid mid August something like that. And it still gives us what another four months to, to potentially have another closing or two uh, before the end of the year to maybe hit that 2,200, that 3,000 units by the end of 2022. So that being said, lately been passing on a lot of deals that have come across my desk as well. You know, I was supposed to go on a couple more showings last week um, and just doing a little bit of high overview, uh, high, high level review of those properties and, and the areas and what's around them. I'm like, you know, I don't need to do this one. I don't need to do this one. So I canceled three or four showings, but there's been a lot coming over my desk that, you know, has been junk that we kind of just throw away right away. How I kind of got, have gotten to the point now where I'm evaluating is I don't, I don't, you know, these spreadsheets, these crazy spreadsheets that we have, I don't put every deal into the crazy spreadsheets, right? The first thing I'm looking at is kind of the location. Hey, is this a place we want to be right? And then if it's a place like the city, Madison, Wisconsin, is that the place we want to be? Well, there's certain neighborhoods in Madison, there's certain neighborhoods in Milwaukee that I still don't want to go to. So, okay, after it's the city, you know, the area, what, what actual part of the city is it? Block by block, the, my opinion on if we want to be there or not, you know, it changes. But as you become more experienced in what you're doing, you know where you want to be, where you don't want to be. You start to really understand the cities and where the growth is going, where, where the type of renter that you're trying to attract, the type of property that you want to have and the type of renter you're trying to attract, you kind of know the areas that you have to be in. And so we're sticking to it. And so if it literally will fall a block across 
um, you know, across one road that we don't want to necessarily go across, we'll pass on the deal, right? And so it comes across my desk. I see, hey, great, it's Milwaukee, but now it's the block that we don't want to be. Next, I don't, I don't spend any more time on it. I don't put all the numbers in. I don't care what the return could be, you know, whatever. It's a place that we don't necessarily want to go. Then, then I kind of go down to my other things, the cap rate, the price per unit, all the things that we talked about in other you know, want to know Wednesday video that you can find if you go to my YouTube page and go want to know when Wednesdays, here's a plug for it, right? Go to want to know Wednesdays, check it out. But going down the list of the other things that we look at, you know, I look at the price per unit, the cap rate, the gross rent multiplier, uh, cash on cash. I look at what type of product it is so I can better understand where our expenses are going to fall when we're operating the deal. Um, and I can do all that stuff now at, from a very, very high level. I used to have to spend 30 minutes per deal to figure that out, to really understand it. I can look at it now and know and do some quick mental math or like, you know, take basically, I can basically take a $50 million deal and write it out on this right here. And I have an idea if it's going to pencil or not. If it doesn't pencil, then I don't spend any more time plugging it into our spreadsheets. But now when, when we get to the point where we're doing all these spreadsheets, right? We're, we got a pretty good idea that, Hey, this is, this is something that we want to invest in that we want to go after. Um, and, and uh, pull the trigger on and do. I don't spend, you know, cause this takes a while to go through and underwrite this way. So I don't need to spend all my time doing that if I, I can already rule it out and toss it by. So if, if 100 deals are coming across my desk, I can't sit here and plug them all into the computer. No analyst can sit here and plug them all into the computer. You have to have some high level parameters. Just choose enough parameters where you're not gonna limit yourself, right? Have seven buckets, eight buckets, 10 things that you look at that you can relatively quickly check off for most of them and then move on to the next step of either tossing it out the window or hey, let's take a little more time and look at this thing. So last week, I basically made, made up my mind say, hey, I'm not going to look at this one, this one, this one because I wanna take my time and allocate it somewhere else. I don't need to go waste my time look at something that I don't really want, right? Sometimes I do go and look if it's something that I know that I don't really want because I want to meet up with a broker. I do want to check out that area to see if anything has changed. I still want to stay on top of it. You know, I use it as I, I use it. I use it in the database. Right. And to try to just always be getting updates and feedback because things change. Right. And as things change, I'm not scared to say, hey, we're also going to change with them. And change a little bit of what we're doing or where we're looking or how we're looking at things. Uh, but that's, that's what we're doing right now. So we're going to have more LOIs going out, raising about 15, $16 million. If you're not on our, on our investor list or in our investor database, or if you don't get, you know, those, those updates from us, let me know, shoot us, you know, shoot us your full name, your number, your email, we'll get you on there. We're only taking accredited investors. And then once we have you on our accredited investor list, then you can see information on our opportunities to see if it's something that you want to invest in or not. So that being said, um, I know I talked kind of fast today, got a lot going on, looking to move on to the next thing of the day after we shoot this content. Appreciate you guys following along. If you haven't liked the, the channel yet or subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't liked this video yet. And if you did like it, if you didn't like it, hey, leave a thumbs down. If you did, leave a thumbs up. Um, if you you know want to voice your opinion, good or bad, please voice your opinion below. If you have a question, leave it below. And please, man, share the channel with other people. I'm doing all this stuff for free. None of you guys are paying anything for it. Uh, billions of dollars of knowledge, in my opinion. And maybe you think I'm a BSer, and that's fine. But in my opinion, billions of dollars of knowledge on this channel. I think that we're the most undervalued or most underrated, overlooked YouTube channel that's out there. That's what I think. That's my that's my honest opinion. So so feel free to share it with some other people that you think will get benefits out of it. And man, we're gonna blow this thing up. We're gonna keep growing. We're gonna get to 20,000 units here over the next you know, four and a half, four and a half years. So uh, we'll talk to you soon, YouTube. Peace.